Hey everyone, um, I'm Jeremy. I'm here today to talk to you about migrating session and my session is called the long and short of migrating through Drupal. Thank you very much for coming and thank you to the organisers and the volunteers for helping out. It's much appreciated. Change slides. There we are. Um, this is going to be split into roughly two halves. The first part will just be a general discussion about migration, with some specifics about Drupal, but a very sort of high level view about what migration is um, and cultural factors affecting that. And there'll be lots of pretty pictures there just to give you a kind of an impact. Um, part two is a bit more detailed, looking at code, no pretty pictures, and I'll actually try and do a live migration um, while we're here. Okay. So, this is the kind of proceed progress of a typical migration. So you start out, you load up Drupal, you load up the migrate module and you say, hey, this is great, we're getting loads of data into Drupal. Um, a little bit later on, we get it themed and it kind of looks like we're almost finished. And then suddenly there's this long tail. Now it's not necessarily a bad thing. All it means is you're starting to migrate across features and you're trying to find all the little bits that you didn't notice when you first did the migration. So if you had, say, I don't know, a thousand content items, you might have migrated 950 of them file, and that last 50 are going to have little bugs which are awkward to kink to sort of get rid of. Um, and you're also migrating functionality, and that is a lot more tricky than migrating content. Um, yeah, piece of content is a piece of text with some markup in it. Functionality, things like workflow, are actually a lot more difficult to get into Drupal. Not because Drupal is difficult, but where things are to play. So, this is how a lot of people perceiving migration. This isn't to do with Drupal, it's to do with change in general, and especially at work. People don't like to have to think of work. Um, in my office, they had a refit recently, and they changed the kitchen around. Uh, the kitchen was probably nicer, but there was an old coffee machine, a big, clunky, filter coffee machine, which made really strong coffee, but was nearly always empty. I really like the coffee. And now we've got a new, fancy one you could capture. So even though it's probably technically better, I really didn't like that change, because I like the other one. And I think you get that with people. They have old systems, they have ways that they're used to working, and um, <coughs> you put them in, in sort of a, a new situation and they're going to resist it, they're going to resist change. Um, not everybody does, you get some people who are really keen, they're sort of early adopters, they may have already looked at Drupal and they'll be really on board. But you've got to bear in mind that there are, there are all sorts. Now, this is what I found with, with mm -hmm. migrations, is you get some people will insist on a feature. They'll go, we want this particular screen with this functionality, even though Drupal may have a slightly different screen that does the functionality just the same. Um, an example of this, which just shows how tricky it can be, is um, I once worked somewhere and they um, had category pages. So instead of having what we think of as tags in Drupal, they, they had pages that they manually curated, and they, they sort of put links to certain content items with a bit of text by it. Now, you look at that with the migration, and the, the simple idea is you say, okay, well, that can just be tags on a node. Um, and in most places, it, it can be. But in this particular place, they actually placed a lot of value on the curation. So people putting a bit of text along with the thing and the order of the, the content on the category page. So sometimes there is a good reason for something that seems a bit wonky, but a lot of the time there isn't. The critical features that you forget to mention is the other classic case. Um, I think it's very difficult to have your feet in both hand camps, to be really familiar with the old system and to be really familiar with Drupal. If it's your job to migrate, you might have an idea, but you're not going to be using the old system day to day, so you're not going to have the quirks of it. Um, what happened with me recently with that is there was a feature somebody asked for called Global Announcements, so it's kind of like a, a super secret player, um, and those would appear on almost every page of the site, which I thought, okay, that's just a player, put that in. And it was working fine. And we went live, and they're like, how do we set the expiry on these items? That's, they didn't ask for expiry, so there is a module called Client Expire, which you need to turn on to do. But it's just something that was quite critical to the users, but they just kind of assumed it was packaged up in the feature I delivered. So it's, it's something to bear in mind. Migration is more tricky than a new build. It's something else to remember. It's, um, if you imagine you're building on a field, You've got nothing to worry about. You can plump the building where you want. You can put the access where you want. You can put in the utilities where you want. 
If you're on kind of a more of a brownfield site, you've got to worry about access, you might not have the power where you want to. And you, know, you think about that with a website, you may have feeds coming in, you might have syndication feeds coming out. You've got to plug into all of that with your, with your migration. Um, does anybody watch Grand Designs? Um, uh, I'm addicted to it. And you always find, okay, times when they're building a new house, it tends to go reasonably smoothly. It's when they're refurbing something and gutting it and putting things back together that they have all the unexpected problems. And that's what you get there. I, mean, I had something happen to me once, um, not specific to Drupal. There was a, a third party system being replaced and they had feeds that came in and the feeds were slightly different. They'd lost a few fields. And I did a huge audit of the code base and made sure these fields weren't actually used anywhere. And I said, yeah, that's fine. Um, went live with a new system and somebody from the US office phoned up saying, oh, our syndication partners um, have got problems with their speed. Oh, we have syndication partners? <laughs> it, was, uh, it was news to me, so then we had to sort of retrofit it all quite quickly. Um, the other thing that you've got to be careful about when building features is to try and, as much as possible, stick with what Drupal provides. So your best benefit is going to be, if somebody asks for a feature like, I don't know, um, image resizing, then use the image modules in Drupal. If they want something where the workflow is slightly different, try to resist it, unless there's a really good reason, because you're going to spend an awful lot of time otherwise refitting things which are already there in Drupal just to fit a particular workflow that may not actually be, be useful. And in the worst case, you're going to end up breaking things because you might have to you know, have core or take a module and customize it to such an extent that it's no longer interoperable. So that's like, like Lego bricks. You can build a lot with Lego, but as soon as you started melt, melting Lego bricks to make it fit a particular shape, you're going to lose that interoperability. Okay. Um, now, launch, the, once you get to a certain stage in your, um, your migration, you kind of say, okay, this is good enough. It's very rare that we say, okay, everything's been migrated 100%. You have to kind of look at a value judgment and say, actually, all these other things are going to take us six months to migrate. They're not actually pages which are used on the site very often, not, not features which are used. Um, a good way to actually get to that is to do a sort of backlog, almost like Scrum, and say, okay, these are the features we want, and at a certain point, cut off and say, these other things aren't as valuable, and might not be worth migrating. Um, the really obvious way to migrate is to go for a big bang. So, one morning, you put your website into maintenance mode, your website, you migrate everything across, you switch your DNS servers or your load balancer to put a new, new site from there. If everything works, that's fine. Um, you may not find that the sites have quite been scaled correctly, or you might find there are issues um, which you didn't anticipate beforehand. So there are other ways you can do it, which are probably more complicated. If you can do the big bang, that's good, but you can do a kind of live migration. So you keep, for a time, you keep the old site being edited in whatever system you had. And you keep your migration running on a kind of periodic basis. So that you're getting the front end served in Drupal, and perhaps you know, the nice comments and whatever else you have there. But your old sort of editing system is there, and then you've got more time then to migrate that across. Um, the other thing you can do is to do a clever trick on the load balancer. So you say, OK, we're going to start migrate or start the, the similar process where you have content being migrated on two systems but you say okay 10% of our users will go to Drupal see if the sites can cope with that see if it works okay and then sort of slowly reconfigure your load balancer to put more and more traffic onto the Drupal service. Um, this is a very handy political maneuver. I don't know if anybody knows uh, about this. There was HMS the Stewart which is one of the new fancy submarines that they built and Quite soon after it launched, it ran around, and this is it being towed away. Um, which you'd think, oh, that's terrible. But they said, well, we're in our shakedown time. So that's more or less okay. If you build the expectations of business that you know, you've done your best, you've identified all the issues you know about, but post-live, you're going to spend uh, two weeks, four weeks, focusing on issues as they come up, asking your priority. That gives you a little bit of room, room so when anything goes wrong, you say, well, we are you know, aware that things might go wrong. And it also just helps politically to say, okay, this is the time. We know we're on a brand new system, we're running at full pelt, and if you, if we get problems, we are there ready to address them. Perhaps not 24-7, but at least um, most of the time. Okay. And that's the, the end of part one. Are there any questions on that before I move on to the technical? Okay. Um, has anybody here done 
Anything with my grade module before? Um, okay. so, probably teaching to convert it, but we'll, <coughs> we'll go through it. Um, what I'm, I'll do as a demonstration a little bit is, um, you're probably all aware of Stack, stack Overflow and Stack Exchange Stacks. They do, any question on there is Creative Commons, so it, they do data dumps periodically, although they seem to stop now. And um, I'm going to show migration from some of their files into Drupal, just the question in the users, but that should give you an idea of how it can work. Um, the two module, modules that are really important are Migrate and Migrate Extras. Migrate basically focuses on the framework for migrating and migrating of core types. Migrate Extras is for popular modules, so there's things like um, Flag, Voting API. If you go to the Migrate Extras homepage, there's a big kind of status of all the modules that they support and in which versions that are in Drupal 6 and Drupal 7. There's also a module which is part of Migrate called Migrate UI, and that is a bit like Use UI. Um, you can migrate perfectly happily via the trash or whatever other functions you want without the Migrate UI, but it is quite handy to see it and to see your status. And I'll show you that it, it kind of can give you an idea of where you're at with the migration. Um, and it shows, uh, yeah, shows the fields which are mapped and unmapped. Now, mapping is perhaps the, the core concept behind migration. Each migrate class in your code migrates from something into a content type or an entity type in, in Drupal. And within that, you have migrate mappings, which basically map something from a source into a, a field in Drupal. And, and this is a rough... Um, View of it. This is taken from the migrate documentation, which is actually quite good. Most, well not most, some Drupal modules documentation is a little bit not brilliant, but migrate really is. Um, so migrate is kind of like a, a container class. Um, you extend, I don't know how familiar you are with OO code, but basically you extend <coughs> a class of type migrate with your your own class, and you have to within that define a source, a migrate mapping, and a destination. And you also migrate field mappings between your source and the destination. <coughs> so, um, article page or your custom type, um, you can migrate terms across and users. Um, and migrate mapping um, is basically quite important. It um, basically helps you reference things in your old system, your new system. We'll show that in an example in a minute. That's actually really, really. Um, powerful. Um, field mappings are quite simple. You're saying take this field back. It's a SQL field that would be like, say, your username field in your source data and apply it to the username field in Drupal. Um, and it works pretty easily. Sometimes that's not so simple. Um, sometimes you need to mark, sort of massage the data a little bit into place before it will go. And I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, the next slide is this. Actually, first of all, what we'll do is look at the migrate UI module. So it's found underneath your content tag. So if you click on content, you have a tag called migrate, and that will show your migrations. Um, we have two migrations set up at the moment. One is for Stack Exchange users, and one is for Stack Exchange posts. Um, I haven't got any sort of questions, or sorry, any answers, or votes or anything here yet. It's just sort of something to show a basic idea. <coughs> uh, if you click on a particular content type, or, or sorry, a particular migrate, it gives you these tabs here, and basically shows you the destination, which in this case is user. You map some fields, so we've got username, we've got password, um, We've got created time, but we've got these other fields which are, are in Drupal but are not mapping up into them yet. And you have the equivalent for your source. Now, destination is not so important. If there's a field that's not required in Drupal and you don't map to it, then that's not a problem. Missing things from your source can be important because it's your source data you want to map across. So seeing what you've got in here, which isn't necessarily mapped, is more important. So we've got things like location, age, upvotes and downvotes. Um, and it shows you also the fields that you have mapped. Um, I'll show you the default fields in the code. That's probably a good sentence. And now I'll get back to the code. 
Um, now this is the, the module I've written. I'm going to put it on GitHub and I'll post the, the URL in my slides when we have open to the account. So if anybody wants to, to look at this code and, and try it out, they can do. Um, the first thing we see is a hook to hook migrate API. This is a bit like hook to use API, if anybody's used that. We're basically telling the migrate module, hey, this module exists and I integrate with you. And, you know, can you look for me through other hooks? Um, the other part we've got here is migration. So this is actually defining migrations that appear in the, the table we saw in the UI. That is one way to get the migrations in. You can also um, call a function called register migrations, where it's a, a method of the static migrate object. Um, that's useful if you have um, perhaps several types of a class. So um, I've used that in my PHP BB to Drupal migration. If you want to migrate more than one bulletin board at a time, you can call register migration and you pass it kind of the query string to your, your PHP BB database, and then you can have multiple migrations set up in your UI, even though they share the same class. But the much simpler way is to just define them in the, in the migrate API hook. Um, as we see here, we've got um, a class of migrate user which extends XML migration. XML migration is ex itself an extension of migrate. So you can get kind of a cascade of different types of migrate getting more and more specialized um, as you go down. The main function that you need to look at when you're defining migration is your construct. Um, migrate is very nearly a very nice um, OO framework that you can um, inject dependencies. So if you put parameters on construct, you could actually have a very, very flexible framework. It's not quite there yet, but it's pretty good. So in your construct, you define your source, your destination, and your wrappings. You can probably be programmatic about it, but it's not something I'm allowed to do. Um, so I'm actually too tedious looking through this. I'm basically setting up the, the source here, so we're saying, get this file. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with XPath, but because it's an XML file rather than the <coughs> database, we're having to define a query which will return the rows, or return the, the records from the database. And we're also having to define an ID query, which is saying this is the ID field of the rows we get. Um, if we have a quick look here, we've got um, commented out is the format of a particular row. So the data is pretty flat for an XML file. You've just got um, a user's node, and then below that, you've got lots and lots of row nodes. Um, you have to define your fields with an XML type. It's a migrate, although it's very flexible, it's kind of built originally around SQL. Um, migrations. So if you're running on something which isn't SQL, then you have to define your fields. So if you had a query, if you do the SQL migrate object and you have a query in there, it knows off the bat that these are your fields because they're the fields that you define in your query. Because it's XML and there's no fields implicitly in the next query thing, it depends on the structure of your data, you have to define your fields. If they don't exist in a particular it's not a problem, you can set defaults. I'll show you that in a second. Um, so this source sets your, your source. I'm setting this particular class to migrate to users. The mapping is the, the mapping I said about earlier, which basically tells migrate that this ID in your source data maps to this ID in your target data so that you can roll back users later on if you need to get rid of your data or you can um, map one migration to another, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, and next we've got the mappings. I've only got three mappings we're getting from the source. So we've got display name, um, creation date, and the website URL, which isn't working at the moment, so don't worry about that. We've also got some, um, some static mappings. So not everything may exist in your source data. In this case, we don't get passwords, for example, but Drupal requires you to have a password to, to register a user, or at least an email address. So you can add a field mapping, which maps to password in your Drupal database, but it's just a static value. Um, another thing time is useful if you want all the nodes you migrate to be active, you can migrate the, the active flag with your nodes as a default value. If you didn't have something in your source that said whether something was sort of displayed or not. And then the description is just something that shows on the UI. So if we go back to the UI. This will take a couple of minutes, I'll talk you through the next one while we're, we're doing. So at the moment, if we look at people, um, we just have admin in our site. Back to my grade. I'm using the UI here. The next one um, I'll use Drush with just to show you the 
variety. And we click on that and we get a sort of a, a batch screen come up. Um, it'll take a couple of minutes, so I'll get back to the code while we're doing that. Um, now this is very similar, this is migrating posts. The clever bit that you should be aware of is um, if we look at our mappings, we have a particular field mapping here to the only UID. Now, this could be really tricky because you've got a, a UID in your source data, which you, you know, and you actually need to migrate to a UID in your Drupal data, which you don't necessarily know from the migration. Luckily, you can define a, a method called source migration, which basically says, actually, use the IDs in this other migration. So you can, need to set up a dependency saying, um, I'll show you, okay, just, just quite simple. So you, you have an array of dependencies. So if you had, say, comments that depend on a node, then you can have a node being a dependency of comments. And if, users, if nodes are dependent on users, you can set that list. Okay, our, migrate, our node migration needs to be dependent on users. You can't start this migration until you've done users. Um, and that's the, that's the core of that. There is another trick which I'm not showing here. Okay, I'll show you the errors. This is, I said right at the beginning, you have most of your data will come in straight away, you have to massage. Now, these aren't very pretty, but this is basically saying that on Stack Exchange there are duplicate user IDs. And Drupal won't allow that. So it's trying to insert users and just bombing out. So you'll need to massage your data somehow to, to get around the fact that they're just the user ideas. But it's, let's go to people now, more on that. You can now see that there are lots of users on the site and it's shown me how long they're in the <coughs> So um, the data is about seven months out of date, but it shows um, all the users and how long they've been registered for. To migrate the nodes, I'll use Drush and I believe that's it. Thanks. So this is my this is doing the same thing we did through the um, through the UI right via Drush. If you've got a really big migration, and they can take hours and hours to run if you've got tens of thousands of nodes and the users and things, it's better to do it by a drush. It's just a bit more stable than using the batch process. Um, you still get all the messages showing. Um, it just lasts a lot better. Um, and you can also kind of sh check the shell script that it's still running and things if you need to. Um, you can also set how many, how often you get the, the debug showing. It's doing it every thousand users. Content. Maybe I've got <coughs> suddenly a Drupal site with hundreds of nodes in. Um, it's got some of the markup coming across, and it's also linking to the, the user, so you can click on the user profile. Not we've got very much there, but it's linking the, the users to the nodes, that, or the, yeah, the authors to, the, to their nodes. The one thing that I'm not going to cover in here because it gets a little bit more complicated is the idea of stubs. And that's kind of a dependency in reverse. So um, an example with Stack Exchange would be one of the properties of a question is the answer ID. Now you get a kind of catch-22 situation there in that you need to import your questions before you import your <coughs> answers. But when you import your questions, you need to set the answer ID. So what you do there is you create a stub. So it's actually a method of the, um, the answer object. And you just create basically an empty object with a reference in there so that when that question is, or when that answer is migrated, it knows, oh yeah, I'm already referenced in the system, and it sets it correctly. Um, it's not that tricky, but I just thought it was probably a bit too much of this thing. Um, and that is just about it. Um, I stand up that. Are there any <coughs> questions about migrate or modules? Or? What is migrate group? My great group isn't hugely used, <coughs> um, you can use it um, to try and keep um, the, um, I use it with PHP to be migration, 
if you've got four different migrations from different PB databases, you can say these are all separate groups. Um, and you can, when you use Drush, migrate the group of across. But the group name is not actually displayed anywhere in the UI, so you kind of need to know what it is to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, you mentioned early on um, when talking about the project management side of things, um, doing an incremental migration. So you know, managing so the Drupal serving your front end, but you're, you sort of come from the old site. Yeah. Is there any um, framework with which to migrate like edits on a rolling basis? Um, you can do that. Um, there are things called the high watermark, and you can also set it to um, to look for the last modified date of things. But I can't remember exactly how to do that. But it is possible. Uh, any advice on uh, migration of the use of passwords? Like, uh... Yeah, if they're already hashed with an MD5 hash, then you can kind of put them straight into the Drupal database and they'll work. Anything else gets a little bit tricky. Okay. Um, I believe with Drupal 7 you can, you can specify a user hash, but I can't remember exactly how to do that. But um, yeah, if they're hashed in a, a different way or with different salt to your Drupal site, it's it's not an easy thing to do. Okay. Yeah, it, it, does it work in a reverse migration and an exportation from Drupal, so like also a MySQL database? Um, so there is a module called Drupal to Drupal migration, so you can migrate from one Drupal theme to another. If you're looking at exporting your data, um, you probably want to look at using views with some um, XML type. To, to sort of get a feed out. Um, it depends on, on your user case, but um, there are lots of ways to get data out of Drupal, but it's not really a migrating module thing. It's migrating to rather than from feeds. Yeah. Which is too data based. Um, a slightly broader question, but well, links to. Um, in a sort of scenario, um, I'm sure some of us have probably had this one, where you know, you've got a so called CMS previously, which is effectively just got WYSIWYG um, input and people have been putting images and text and whatever else they like. Yeah. So basically you've just got a bunch of markup, yeah. right? And unstructured. Yeah. And you want to, your challenge is to bring that into Drupal. Yeah. Is there an approach you'd recommend to, 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 to handling that? I mean, when you talk, obviously, because there's you know, no structure there, so yeah. you have to sort of parse all that out in the first place. Yeah, and a, a crude way would just be to, if you have a common place for static assets in the code, the old site, just to copy them across and, and keep your markup and just make sure that yeah, it's all Yeah, just bring it in as it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if you're if lucky, you want to get it into structure, though, is then it just give up? Or <laughs> you've got what I didn't show you. I'll go back to the code very quickly. We've got time. Um, is the, um, you have a load of, massaging mm. inflection points. One of them is repair row, and there's repair node as well. And they're basically different stages of migrate. You can actually take what migrate thinks is happening and update it depending on what you actually want to be the truth. Um, what I've actually did with the stack up sharing migration is to decode the special charts because I had all the entities, HTML entities, encoded. I was trying to get tags working, but that didn't quite work before then. I was like, I could put it out. Um, but you could do something like that, and at that point you could parse out um, your image URL so you get right, some clunky HTML parser to get your URLs and put those attachments to your node at that point. Or actually, repair node, repair node would probably be the best place for that. Right. Cool. Um, just sort of perhaps a little bit more on the project management side of things. Do you use a particular methodology or any tools to determine what the mappings would be in the first place? So, say if you've got in an existing CMS, say two content types or whatever their equivalent is that you want to migrate into a single node type. Like, how do you figure out those mappings kind of ahead of actually writing all up here? It's, I suppose, it's more a case of experience. I wouldn't say it's a particular methodology, but if you, as you get more used to building Drupal sites, it becomes more apparent what what should be and what shouldn't be. Um, I think that a rule of thumb is if you're finding that you have a load of fields that are populated half the time with something in the other, another load of fields which are populated half the time with another type of node, they should probably be separate node types. Um, but it's, it's more of a conceptual thing as well. As if, if you really want something to be the same node type moving forward, then make it the same node type. You, know, you can 
you can mess around with mappings a little bit so you can, you've got the prepare node and the prepare uh, row. You can say actually, in this case, because we've got two images, we want to do something different. Or in this case, we've got um, a certain flag set, so we want to put it to a different type. You know, you know XML is fairly simple. And if we go back to the query <coughs> here, with the, the stack exchange dump, and I was looking at it, Questions and answers are actually both considered as posts. So in this particular case, I'm stripping it out. So I'm saying post type one in a source system, which is questions, I'm putting into nodes in Drupal. Mm -hmm. um, you could do that if you had a SQL query as well. So you could say, OK, I know from my source data, if I write this particular query, it will give me all the things I want to put into this type. It doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one mapping. <coughs> Of your content types, you can do that. Do you do you document that in a particular way, kind of prior to this process? So you're actually kind of getting approval for the sort of proposed mappings, or um, you could do. What I would say though is this: setting up this isn't very time-consuming. Um, setting up the, the Drupal side of things is a little bit more. I, I didn't really mention that, but I'd say that you can. Um, what I tend to, to do is to build content types in code. It's a bit old fashioned, but I use install hooks. So you can basically kill your site, um, install a module, which is your migration, um, and that will set up the content types for you and the mappings. It doesn't take that long, so if you want to mess around with it and try things in Drupal, you can do. Rather than saying, this is fixed ahead of time, it's flexible enough to, to allow you to do that. Is it possible to use migration of data existing content? It's possible. Um, I wouldn't advise it. Um, it's something I had to do specifically with the, the PHPDB migration I, I have done. Um, is that we were migrating five bulletin boards into one, and there was a lot of collisions with the usernames. Um, and we had to kind of fudge it so that if a user had the same email address, then it would update the same user. You have to think then about what fields you want, want to overwrite, what fields you want to keep, and how you manage cases where it's not the same. Mm -hmm. But it is possible. Um, I had to do a little hack. Let me just see if I've got the file open and show you. Um, it's a very strange little hack, but basically I had to define a custom migrate destination type which um, basically put that in there because Migrate didn't like the fact that we were trying to update the existing rows, so I had to mm -hmm. hack it and say, actually, no, in this case, set the UID to be what's in the, the source system because normally it would kind of bar it and say, I'm not going to say this, this is a, a new record. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that seemed to, to do the trick. But that's not ideal. Ideally, it's, it's fresh content, but you can do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Chairman.